My name is uh, Bill Hawkins. I'm a pancreas cancer surgeon, and right now I'm going to talk about a distal or left pancreatectomy for pancreatic cancer. Uh, the pancreas is a guppy-shaped organ that sits like this, and uh, this is the head of the pancreas here, and this is the tail of the pancreas on this side. Everything to this side of the pancreas is the neck and tail region. Uh, distal pancreatectomy is performed when tumors happen in the body or tail of the pancreas, as opposed to the Whipple operation when tumors are in the head of the pancreas. The uh, distal pancreas um, tumors are quite difficult to diagnose because they can grow quite large in this location without causing any symptoms. Um, and tumors are often uh, diagnosed because they either cause pain or, uh, or um, they've already spread. And so um, when we are lucky enough to find uh, pancreas cancer of the distal pancreatic of the distal pancreas, which is operable, um, they're usually larger than they are in the head, and they are usually um, um, invading around or outside of the pancreas um, when we detect them. This um, can be removed even when large, as long as there's no evidence of spread to the liver or some of the other services. Now, the um, Blood vessels um, in this area that come right under the pancreas here are the splenic artery and splenic vein. And one runs right in the back of the pancreas and one runs along the superior border of the pancreas, the artery up here, and the vein right behind the pancreas. And these supply the spleen with blood products. So the appropriate cancer operation for this um, disease is to do what's called a pancreatico- uh, splenectomy, or a distal pancreas and spleen. And so we remove everything from this line all the way out to the edge of the abdomen to remove all this. And the reason we do that is because lymph nodes can track along these arteries back to their origins and along the veins, and they can track along towards the spleen. So the lymph vessels flow in these directions. And so in order to get all of these out, we recommend taking the spleen and vessels when you're doing a major cancer operation. In, a different, in, a, in addition, if we were to look at this in the up and down plane, we would see that underneath the pancreas here lies the adrenal gland and the kidney. And so if these tumors are large, sometimes we also have um, them either touching or butting one of these organs. The colon sits anterior to it, so uh, out here in this plane would be the colon, and the stomach sits right up here, sort of on top of it. So any of these other things in this area can be invaded by pancreatic cancer and can be part of the operation. Now, at our institution, one of my senior partners, Dr. Strasburg, um, described a way to do this operation called the RAMPS, or Radical Antigrade Modular Pancreatectomy, which is different than this was hist taught historically. Historically, one elevates the spleen, dissects along the pancreas, transect it when you're beyond the cancer, and then you're done with the operation. But that doesn't do as good a job as determining which of these things might be invaded, and can we get better anterior and posterior margins. So what we do at this institution is divide the pancreas at the neck of the pancreas, and then we decide by what the x-rays say, how deep do we need to go? And if we need to go deep to take the adrenal gland or the capsule of the kidney or something like that, we will, we'll know how deep to go even before we plan the operation. In addition, by working this way, we can come right down to the origin of these blood vessels and include all the lymph nodes. So the reason it's called modular is because there is a uh, superficial, you know, above the adrenal gland or deep to the adrenal gland. And we've published our experience on this and shown that we can get much better margins and much less patients with a positive margin in one of these directions by doing this radical antegrade modular distal pancreatectomy splenectomy. Uh, the operation is quite um, safe, and to be honest, we can even do this operation laparoscopically now. And so many patients who come for this operation will have incisions no bigger than the size of this pen in order to do this operation. In addition, um, there are complications which are unique to this operation because when we transect the pancreas and you have the head of the pancreas sitting here, you have um, 
a valve at this end of your pancreas. And so there's pressure from all the little ducts that go in here um, from the digestive juices. And there's, um, and this valve sort of only opens up when you eat. And so one can get a leak of pancreatic juice at this end of the resected pancreas. And so when we do this operation, we always leave a drain um, in the bed of the resection, whether we do it laparoscopically or open, and we leave that drain until you come to your post-op visit to make sure that there's not been any leak from this operation. And leak rates historically for this operation have been around 20%. Uh, we've got some innovative uh, research going on here where we're, we're pretty optimistic that we're gonna get this leak rate down uh, to less than 5%, um, but uh, we would encourage the patients to participate in that. If they're interested, we'll discuss it at the time of their visit.